I have a very quick clip I want to show you. Um, I'm doing a lot more work on a much longer video and, in a series that is coming out of one Zoom session that happened uh, October 1st, 2020 with Thomas John and Suzanne Northrup. But I was thinking about this last night and this one little clip, it's 27 seconds long, I think is a really great way of explaining mediumship to you and how it appears to work and how people leave the event feeling like they've really gotten a real reading. And Suzanne Northrup is a very experienced medium. She's been doing this for years and she is a cold reader. In other words, she is going with the statistics, what is common. Um, she's very quick and very glib. And I will be making a bigger, longer video <clears throat> about this whole reading. Please subscribe. Please um, like this video and share it. But please subscribe if you like this kind of thing. You don't want to miss this next video coming out because it is a, it'll be a much more longer, <clears throat> sorry, first thing in the morning for me, much longer, but a really great example of hot and cold reading and two mediums that are going back and forth. And it's really interesting. But this little clip, I think, kind of stands alone. And I, I want to share it with you. So um, it's 27 seconds long. I'm going to show it to you and then let's talk about it. Okay. So who had the old piano in the house? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would be the other side of our family. Um, so that's that side then? Yeah. Our grandpa had an organ. He played an organ. Yeah, I know exactly what they are. Okay. Yeah. So where's dad then? He passed away. Okay, he's coming through Lou and the grandfather. He's identifying by the piano. Okay, do you get that? That was 27 seconds long. All right, let's discuss this because this is common and you will see this appear a lot in cold reading. Suzanne's been doing this for decades, 40 years maybe. I suspect because I've been working on um, Suzanne Northrup for a while and watching her and following her that she has um, like a list of things that she tends to say. So I would suspect that as I continue following her um, cold readings that she's going to use this line a lot. <clears throat> it's common with, with um, people who cold read. What was successful before <clears throat> is successful again. And they just trout it out and it has the same kind of result. All right. So all you guys out there watching right now, hands up. If you know of someone who had an old piano in the house, someone in the house had a piano. Do you know of someone? She's not saying, did you have a piano in your house? She's not saying, did you do you know, I mean, is the person alive? Is the person dead? Is it a piano you played with? Is it, um, you know, could it be a, a piano that might have been in a house temporarily? Um, maybe when you sold grandma's, you know, your parents sold their parents' house. There was a piano in the house, but you didn't know grandma. Um, on and on and on. So I have looked into this before. John Edward uses the line about the piano. And he uses that quite often. John Edward, um, great cold reader. And so I had to look this up a long time ago. And in, in Canada and America in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it was extremely common to have a piano in the house. Somebody had a piano in the house in your world. Um, either a neighbor, a cousin, uh, a friend of the family, or a real relative, because this was a common um, musical instrument that people would have access to. And they would, you know, the family would gather around and you would sing it. And children took music lessons and on and on and on. It was very common. So for a family not to have had access to a piano in the house is extremely rare, at least in 
Canada and United States. I don't know what it's like in Europe or other countries, but it was very common here. So this is a general comment that Susanne is throwing out there. Like I said, I've seen John Edward use it as well, but it's going to hit. It's like the old cold reading line. Do you have, you have a scar on your knee. I mean, everybody probably has a scar on their knee. They can even go as far as you have a scar on your right knee. And even if it's on your left knee, the psychic can say, oh, it's my right, your left. You know, see, see, get it? It's really clever. So they're right even when they're wrong. So this comment about the, the piano, it is pure cold. And I want to just do this video really quick because I'm going to do a much longer video in um, on this whole reading, which is just, like I said, it's just really fascinating. You guys are going to love this. Uh, but because I think this is just a very typical clip. And I, when these women, these are sisters, when they leave this reading today, just thinking about just the clip of the piano, just the piano, they're going to leave and they're going to remember, even though this is recorded, and they have a copy of the recording, but most people don't really look it over it again. They're going to leave the reading and they're going to say, oh my gosh, this Suzanne Northrup was so accurate because not, not only all the other amazing things she got, but she knew that my grandfather played the organ. And I, I bet they even add the guy's name. I bet they say she was so amazing because they knew, she knew that Grandpa Jack played the organ can you believe it she's amazing how could she possibly have known that and this is typical this is extremely normal for a sitter to misremember or to add to it because we're storytellers and we like to relate to people and so what will happen is they'll embellish this with things that did not happen to make the story more um more easy easily told and for them to not have looked like they just fell for some kind of line they'll say oh no no she was really accurate she knew it was an organ she knew it was uncle uh, grandpa jack she she knew all about that no no she, she's got it and when they tell this story to their friends and family then people will say oh maybe there is something to this mediumship and maybe i should get a reading from suzanne northrop or someone like her because i mean gosh she was so accurate to those other people that told me the story. So it must be real. Yeah, that's how it works. This is just this how it works. It's just this, this simple. It's a, a statement like this that I bet Suzanne has probably used hundreds of times in her readings about an old piano. And remember, it wasn't a piano. It was an organ. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but... It's not an old piano. Anyway, please subscribe. I really would appreciate it. Um, please comment. I'd really like to hear if you did not have somebody in the family, living or dead, that you knew or didn't know that had a piano in the house. Now, I've seen people say, um, another line I've heard, I'm trying to think of which medium used this, but they used, oh, Tyler Henry. Tyler Henry uses this line. He says that he remembers um, somebody sitting on a piano bench and their feet didn't touch the floor and they're playing the piano. That was another line. And that was great because what child is going to resist a piano? And that could be a piano in a house, a piano in a church, a piano in uh, um, an airport, a piano somewhere. There's a piano bench and a child is going to sit on there and their feet are not going to touch the ground. And so that's a really, really good line. So that was Tyler Henry that used that one. So this is kind of a common trope. Just uh, throwing out there. But I would be, I'd be really curious if there's anybody out there. I'm looking. No. Mm. Put it, leave in the comments. L let me know what your experience is with the piano or not having access to a piano or seeing a piano in somebody's house.